Alyssa. Hey, Coach. Thanks for taking the time today. Sure. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thanks. I, uh, I just spoke with Max a little bit earlier today about his Super Bowl experience as an international player. Sure. So I just want to get your thoughts on how he's progressed over the season and what's it, it been like having him on the team. It's been great. He's uh, really proud of Max's growth and development. He's taken everything we've given him and run with it. And, I mean, you know, during the season when we have pads on, on Wednesdays or Thursday, whichever day we were in the, our full padded practice earlier in the year, um, we would try and get some one-on-one -on -one reps or some other, whether it be run blocking combinations or one-on-one -on -one pass rush versus the D-line. And he'd step in there and wouldn't blink and did some good things. And he's coming along. I mean, I'm really proud of his progress. We'll take our next question from Stu. Uh Excuse me, just a moment, Coach. Could you scoot over to your left just a little bit, please, sir? Center you up a little bit. Okay. Thank you, sir. Hey, Kevin, when you start, first started working with um, your group, what was the uh, identity that you wanted to instill in them, and you know, what were your goals for them heading into the season? The offensive line specifically, obviously. Sure. I mean, any number of things, but a lot, I mean – but ultimately, you want a group that finishes plays. You know, and I, one of my biggest comments I got about this group was after the Giants played. And uh, we played the Giants. It was the 10th anniversary of the 2011 Super Bowl team. And the tight ends coach on that staff was a guy named Mike Pope, who I worked with in Dallas for two years. And I spoke with him couple days after the game just to check. I was able to see him at halftime of that game because they honored that 2011 team at halftime. Coach Pope was on the staff and he called me a couple days later. I checked in with him and he was just like, you know, you guys, they always, they're always helping the back up. You always see the linemen downfield and but they're always like helping the bat, the ball carry up, whomever it is. And so our guys finished, we want guys to finish plays and then guys that play what look like they play well together and they play as one unit and they communicate effectively and, play hard, but they all, they all finish plays, you know, finish their blocks and play with a, the right mindset and demeanor. And then in Washington, you worked under uh, Bill Callahan, who's widely regarded, I would say, as, as one of the top offensive line coaches in the NFL. Sure. What sorts of things did you pick up from him during that time that um, helped you reach and uh, achieve those goals that you set out and the way, how you wanted the offensive line to look? Yeah, I mean, the biggest – I was with – Coach Callahan in Dallas and then for two years in Washington. And the biggest thing I learned from Bill was just what it takes to be a great coach in this league and how to co how to teach the right way and coach players and how to work, you know. And, um, you know, and every, every coach has his own personality or his own way of reaching his players. And um, you know, I've tried to develop my own, but certainly – a lot of my coaching foundation and fundamentals of coaching the offensive line are I learned from working with Bill. And uh, so, but ultimately though, to answer your question was just like how to do things the right way and how to be a, be a professional. We'll take our next question from Kevin. Uh, hi, Kevin. Is this, I'm sorry. Is this, uh, is this Kevin Modesti? It is. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Good to see you. Uh, I know there are, there are other Kevins uh, out there, but uh, it's just me. Got it. Um, <laughs> um, I, it, uh, you touched on this a little bit in answering Stu, but I wonder if you could kind of take us through the development of the offensive line this season from training camp when you faced some, you know, at least a couple of pretty important decisions about, uh, about starters. Uh, and we'll, what were the challenges from the start? Um, I mean, there's, there's challenges that presented every camp, you know, and, uh, I wouldn't say, you know, there weren't anything that every other teams don't face, you know, I would say, gosh, in terms of, I mean, I would just say this, I mean, this is an incredibly hardworking group. These guys all want to get better. They all want to be the best version of themselves and whatever challenges we had in camp guys worked toward correcting, getting them corrected and improving some shortcomings in their game. I would say the biggest challenge for me in training camp was missing the first 10 days with COVID. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, um, 
Yeah, I mean, going against our defensive line, I mean, it's one of the most talented D lines in the in the in the league, and they make they certainly make us better. I would say that's that was one of the biggest challenges in camp was, you know, going up going up up against our front every day in, in camp. Um, but in terms of like challenges, that nothing that our guys didn't want to improve on and get better from. Yeah, yeah. Just quickly, are you concerned that uh, Sean might? be losing his voice by the end of uh, this week. Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll bounce back. He'll, he'll get his voice back. He'll be all right. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Take our next question from Luciano. Hey, coach. I hope we're doing well. And thanks for your time. This is Luciano Chardonnay with Ensoners Latin American Network. Does playing a guy against a guy like Trey Hendrickson change the way you plan for a game? Well, each rusher that you go against, it doesn't – I mean, each rusher, different multiple rushers you see in the league, you know, you have to have a plan for that particular rusher and, you know, how you're going to block him. And Trey's a great player. He plays really hard. He's got some great pass rush moves. You know, and he's really done a great job for the Bengals this year. I mean, he is certainly one of the better rushers, better rushers we've seen all year. And uh, got a lot of respect for him. Got a lot of respect for the way he plays and how hard he plays. We'll take our next question from Mark Craig. Yeah, Kevin, I was just uh, you know, curious your thought. Get your thoughts on Kevin O'Connell. Like, what's his uh, strongest strength, and what makes you think he'll be uh, successful when he moves on to the Vikings as head coach? Well, I think the world of Kevin. You know, I was with Kevin in Washington, and it was great to get back and work with him again here. And um, He's a very effective communicator. He's got a great rapport with the whole offense, you know, when he meets with the whole unit and his command of the room. And I know he'll get, do a great job of getting everyone, coaches and players, all in alignment and connection on the, on the same page. And I just think he'll do a great job. And I'm really happy for him. We'll take our next question from Daniel. Uh, hi, Kevin. Um, just to, as a position coach, how valuable is it to have a player like Andrew Whitworth who has as much experience as he has in this league? Invaluable. I mean, I can't begin to tell you how valuable it's been to have Whit in the room. Um, he sets the tone. I mean, his example that he sets for all the younger players in the room and the standard that he sets through his work habits – his professionalism, everything. I mean, he certainly has made my job easier and and I've learned a great deal from him and I've learned a great deal from a lot of these guys. Um, but it's certainly when you talk football with Wood and you talk about the nuances and the intricacies of whether it's pass protection or run blocking, I mean, it's really fun and it's fun to talk with him about it. He's engaged. It's, you know, and he is, he can really speak eloquently about the challenges presented with certain blocks, going against certain rushers, how to protect against certain guys. And uh, it's certainly, I've picked up a lot of things from him. And if anything, just maybe how to present or how to word things the right way or, um, but it's great. It's been great. Like, but, but ultimately what's been the most valuable is the example he sets for the younger players and the standard um, that it, you know he raises everyone else around him up to. Coach Carberry, I'm waiting to hear back from the league. We don't have anyone else with their hands raised, so I just have to see if you're if you have permission to leave or or whatnot. So if you wouldn't mind just holding on a couple minutes here to no get confirmation with that. Oh, we have a question from Jake. Hey, Jake, how you doing, Coach? Great, thanks. Yeah, so. Matt Stafford this year was one of the least sacked quarterbacks in the entire NFL. Uh, obviously, that must be something you're doing right. Uh, obviously, your guys are uh, protecting them pretty well. So can you just talk about what you did with your guys this year to help Matt be you know, so well protected and have time in the pocket and uh, obviously be at the bottom of the most sacked quarterback list? Well, I appreciate it. You know, but it, it all starts with these players. And I'm going to talk to guys like Whitworth and Rob. And the whole crew, I mean, these guys take a lot of pride in pass protection. They work incredibly hard at it, and they're great players. I mean, 
Rob's been doing it at a high level for a long time. And so has Witt and Brian Allen from the inside out with his communication has been outstanding. And then also too, the, it takes all 11 to protect them. The receivers do a great job of getting open in the court and Matthew getting rid of the ball in time. And so it takes everybody, but ultimately, and then those five guys up front and the running backs, I mean, guys, Sony, Michelle and Daryl, I mean, they have done an outstanding job of pass protection this year as well. And so it certainly takes all 11 to do so. And, but Sony and Daryl, I mean, they, they've put on, they can, they've put some clips on tape and pass pro that are, I would put up against anybody else in the league in terms of a running back sticking his nose up in there and blocking somebody at the point of attack. It's been really impressive. And, um, and then the five guys all come, like I said, they take a lot of pride in it. They work hard at it and then we study it and they do a good job of it. And so, yeah, I hope that answers your question, but I sure think those guys do a great job. Take our next question from Daniel. We, uh, we talked to Brian Allen earlier and he, uh, you know, discussed just his journey back. Um, you know, from that knee injury. And he, he spoke about how, you know, during training camp, he really just had a moment where he, you know, felt like he, he was back. And I'm curious for you, when when did you sort of realize that he, he was fully back from, from that knee issue and could, and could be, you know, that level of starting center for you this season? Sure. Um, I would say when I got to know Brian in the OTAs and mini camp, I mean, he, I, I saw his professionalism and his work ethic right away. And just in shorts and a t-shirt in the OTA mini camp part of the off-season program, you could see him move around and do some of those things. You could see, you know, why, why he played at a high level in 2019 when he got that starting role. And you know, I, I you could see in camp right away that he was playing at a high level. I don't know if there was a specific moment of like, hey, he's back, but I can't begin to tell you how proud I am of Brian, how proud I am to work with him and coach him. That was a significant injury he came back from, and he worked incredibly hard to get here. And uh, I'm just very excited and happy for him and I'm proud of him. Take our next question from Steve. Hey, Kevin, Steve Whitey, how's everything going? Hey, Steve, how you doing? Doing well, man. Hey, uh, I just want to talk about Sean was really talking about how well Rob uh, Havenstein has played and – it was Whitworth. Some of the pressure that they're going to be under, you know, some of the things that the Bengals do with their edge guys, you know, how well do they have to hold up individually? Um, and or do you think you'll be able to help them um, tight end wise since you are actually down a body um, with, with Higby? Well, right now down a body with Higby possibly being out. Yeah, um, good question. So, like I said, these guys present a number of challenges in protecting the quarterback, whether it's their pressures, stunts and just how and then just in the one-on-one -on -one pass protection setting from Hubbard and Henderson I mean they're both very good pass rushers good ends and they they play incredibly hard and um yeah I think they they'll present challenges for us you know but I think uh you know Rob and Witt they've gone against some really good rushers throughout the year as well and this will be another challenge for them you know and, and it'll present a new set of challenges in terms of the moves that these guys have and that they present and um Certainly feel good about, you know, Rob and Witt and their ability to go out and protect. You know, they've, like I said, I mean, they've gone against some good rushers all year. And um, like I said, they take a lot of pride in it and work hard at it and study it and look forward to watching them go. Hope that that answers your question, Steve. I think I unmuted Steve. So, uh, Steve, if you want to throw in the chat, if that answered your question, or if you want to raise your hand again. There you go, Steve. Sorry about that. Okay, I want to hog a shot clock, but if I got you here. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, no. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all good. So, tell me some of the stuff they do up front um, defensively. Is it things that you've seen before, or is there something, you know, a little bit different? be with pressures or run low gaps, two gap stuff that they do that might be a little bit different? Um, not particularly, no. Through 20 – gosh, we've seen a lot in 20 games, you know, and sometimes you go back and throughout the year you go back and find clips that we may have blocked the same look a certain way 
you know, in week six or week seven or something like that. And you go back and watch it and study and see how you did it and if you can do it better or if you're doing it well and the right way to teach it. Um, but these guys certainly present some nuances and some intricacies to the way they rush the passer and the way they um, defend the run that you got to prepare for and be on the screws with. You know, every every week presents a new challenge that you got you got to prepare for, and this certainly is one. Steve, you have any more questions? Yeah, I mean, if I got you right here, Thomas Brown was just talking about, you know, the different skill sets of the running backs, be it Sony, be it Akers, be it Daryl, um, that you guys are able to do some different things up front as well because of the, of the different ways they do it. But when you guys kind of redesigned the run game to get a little bit more power heavy, you know, when Sony was the main ball carrier, what did that do for your offensive linemen? Because you guys were, seemed like, you know, absolutely committed to running the ball. We know offensive linemen like to move forward instead of backpedal. Uh, and protect so what do they do maybe to the mentality to the uh the playing on a thread um ability so to speak did it change much well the guys certainly you know felt that and embraced it you know starting you know, i would say with the jacksonville game you know when we put joe nopum in there as an extra tight end and um you know, had some more carries in that game and you know we had that we had that stretch there where sony was running it really well and running it hard and um yeah, I would just say the guys certainly embraced it, you know, and but also too in pass protection, uh, guys take a lot of pride in that too, and know that that's an important job and uh, as well. And like, there's an old saying, old line: "There's nothing passive about pass protection." You know, you got to still a physical deal, and so guys got to, you know, we got some of these rushers bull rushing here, coming down your your grill. I mean, you got to sit in there and anchor down. It's a tough job, and so. I'm proud of the way these guys have done it, but but you know to answer your question to answer your question, Steve, earlier about yeah, the guys have embraced it, and the guys certainly you know they certainly enjoy it. Steve, I'll let you I, keep. Uh, you're still the only. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm good with you, Kevin. I just I just got one more, you know, with you, you know, for you. Is there any? Any guy, I mean, I know Sean talked about Rob Haven sign the other day, but is any other guy on the on the offensive line you have just seen just get steadier and better, especially, I mean, look, it's a longer season. You've had guys banged up, especially Allen there at center, but who've really just kind of, with the way this offense has played so well in all facets in the postseason, some other guy or guys who've, who've kind of stepped up and, and risen their game, raised their game, I should say, a little bit more. I couldn't say one, one guy individually. I mean, they've all played – you know, played at a high level, certainly through spots. I mean, you go through different points of the year, you know. Um, for example, the Minnesota game, you know, Dave Edwards started, prepared that whole week at left tackle, right? Coleman Shelton started the game at left guard. Brian gets hurt. All right, move Coleman to center. Bring, uh, bring Alec Jackson in at left tackle. Move Dave back to left guard. Uh, the week before, when we were getting ready to play Seattle, you know, and that crazy, we played him on Tuesday night. You know, we were going to play David, uh, preparing to play David tackle that week. And then Bobby Evans cleared the COVID protocols and Bobby Evans played right tackle, he stepped in and did a good job for us. And so I would just say, I wouldn't say, hey, you know, one guy's really stepped up. Well, these guys have all risen to the occasion and fallen back on their training and their preparation. I mean, these guys prepare at a high level. It kind of goes back to what I said earlier about, you know, Whit being such a great leader in our room because he sets the tone and sets the standard for these guys in terms of what a professional looks like. And all of these guys in our room are pros, pros, you know, Jacksonville game, Brian Allen goes down early in the game, Coleman Shelton steps right in and didn't miss a beat, you know, at Houston early in the year, Jordan Open first start at left tackle for Whit, stepped in and did a good job for us. And the Arizona game on the Monday night, Joe played right tackle that game, you know, and, um, because Rob was out. And so I would say throughout the year, all of these guys stepped up and their number was called in any number of fashion and or in any different manner and really proud of them. And yeah, so I'm, I'm really pleased with, the, I would just say the way guys have stepped up throughout the years when their numbers were called or when they're facing an adversity or an adverse situation, they've done a good job. Yeah, played well, because not like you played uh, some slots defensive fronts uh, <laughs> these, past, these past four games, I should say. I mean, they've really stepped up. Yeah, they certainly presented challenges. These are some good fronts and another good front. We got 
that we're playing Sunday. Right. Hey, man, appreciate you taking the time. Of course. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you go, man. You can go watch a film or you know go see your kids, or whatever. <laughs> <All right. Thank> you. <laughs> you got it, Kevin. Thank you, man. Thanks. You got it. Coach Carberry, Kevin Modesti has another question for you. Sure. Uh, maybe somebody has asked you about this already, but, but uh, I wanted to hear about your experience as an arena bowl winner. I'm, I'm not sure even Kurt Warner won an arena bowl. Wow. Uh, but when you think about going from that to, uh, to this, what do you think? Yeah, good question. So, uh, yeah, I was, uh, that was a cool experience. Ron Jaworski was our team, was part owner of the team, you know, and Bon Jovi was part owner, owner of the team and it was the Philadelphia soul. And it was, it's an awesome experience. I, I looked back on that experience with a lot of great memories and it's, it was pretty cool like, to cross paths with a lot of people that in the league now, like Will McClay was the head coach of the Dallas Desperados. He's, I was with him in Dallas. He's an executive for the Cowboys. Uh, Phil Bogle, who I played with in Philly. I saw him before the game. The NFC Championship game last week. He works in the NFL operations office. Uh, Chris Jackson, who was a great Arena League player, uh, who I played with there. He was an assistant with the Chicago Bears. I worked for Jay Gruden at the Washington team. He would spend a lot of time in the Arena League. So it's kind of neat, you know. And then uh, Kevin Demoff was with the Los LA Avengers here. And so when you cross paths with someone from the Arena League, you kind of share, share a cool bond. And uh, it was a good experience. And I enjoyed it. I was, Shoot, I was a young guy, and I, I coached high school ball in Chicago um, in the offseason doing that. Hmm. But, yeah, certainly it was a good experience. I look back on my fond memories. Did it uh, – what did it What did it give you? I mean, what do you What do you get out of something like that? Uh, um, Gosh, well, I was just playing. You know, I, I wanted to keep playing football and – getting paid to do so. And I thought it might be an avenue to get back in the league. I was on the Lions practice squad in 2005 and camp with the Panthers and camp with the Browns, you know, NFL Europe, I played in NFL Europe and for the Berlin Thunder in that, that league. And so really, I just, I wanted to, wanted to keep playing and uh, made the most, try to make, make the most out of the experience and enjoy it. Sounds cool. Thanks. Awesome. Well, we got three more minutes, Coach Carberry. Hopefully someone comes in. If not, no one comes in within the next minute. I guess we can cut it short. Anyone anyone else on with a question? Oh, Kevin Modesti. I don't want to waste the opportunity to, to hear from you here. Sure. Uh, Brian Allen was talking about uh, how as a a mid-round guy, he really takes pride in beating some of the more, you know, quote, elite guys. Uh, he really seems fired up by that. <laughs> uh, do you see that in him? Do you see that in other guys, uh, you know, uh, whether it's on the line or, or the, the, you know, the many guys on this team who are lower round or, or undrafted uh, who made big contributions? Yeah, certainly. I, I would say Brian, all our guys are there. I would say they're all prideful men and, you know, they take a, a loss hard, but then they also have a short memory can, when they have a bad rep, they can learn from it, move on and use that to get better in the future. And so, but certainly see the pridefulness in these guys, no matter who they're going against, whether it's a big name guy or not a big name guy or whomever it may be. The biggest thing I would say is like, these guys take a ton of pride in what they're doing and whomever they're going against, they want to be going to be the best version of themselves to, you know, win their block or win their rep in the run game or the protection game, whatever it may be. Well, as a guy, you know, yourself who, who had to fight to, to get opportunities uh, as a player, uh, trying to get opportunities as a player, do you relate to guys like that? who didn't come into the league as, as, you know, as glamour guys, but uh, here they are in the Super Bowl. Um, yeah. So everybody's story is different. Everybody's, everybody's way of getting to the league is different. And, you know, you coach 
you coach them all to their individual skill set and you coach them all to their personality. You certainly appreciate some guys that have had different avenues to get into the league, but ultimately, you know, you appreciate all these guys, however they got in the league and however they stay, you know, it, um, you got a high level of respect for all, all of our, all of our guys, however they came in and for, for whatever team, or whatever, wherever, whatever round they came in. And ultimately once, once the ball snapped, it, does, it doesn't matter where you got drafted or mm-hmm. what free agency you signed or who, who, whomever that, that all goes out the window, but certainly, certainly you appreciate all these guys for how hard they work and everything they go through to get to this position. Awesome. Well, thank you, Coach Carberry. That's all the time we got today for today's session. Um, Thank you again. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody.